Thank you, Kyle, uh, very much. And again, you know, a very humble man, but the work he's doing is transformative. And um, part of that transformation and that outcome is helping to highlight the roles and um, the history and stories of youth leaders, such as our next speaker, who is actually one of the top 25 under 25 environmentalists that uh, Starfish Canada helped to, uh, to empower and support. So Abhijit Singh Satchel is an environmentalist and activist from Surrey, British Columbia. He has been involved in various organizations and was inspired to uh, co-found an organization called Break the Divide Foundation after he traveled uh, to the Arctic. And this is awesome, on a Students on Ice expedition back in 2016. Uh, through Break the Divide, youth from around the world are connected to discuss uh, prominent issues facing their communities, such, such as climate change. Uh, Abby is also a, a, you know, an avid public speaker and some cool facts, a hockey player and a pianist. So, you know, a well-rounded young man with an amazing uh, contribution here. And I'd like to give you the opportunity to uh, share your voice with us tonight. Yeah, thank you so much, Yusuf. Uh, I appreciate the kind words and really to echo the sentiments of everyone before. Uh, this is such an honor to be here and to be discussing anti-racism, the environment, reconciliation, and what that all means together. So my talk is really focused on uh, hope empathy and connection in this time of climate crisis and what it means to be in the space that we're at right now. Uh, I'm 19 years old, so I'll talk from a youth perspective. And a uh, fun, fun fact here, Miriam is actually uh, about two years uh, senior to me at the University of Toronto as well. So it's great to see how small of a world this is here. Uh, and, and I guess I'll begin with a bit of, of, of my story. I'm really someone who has been connected with the environment for a long time. And a lot of that is rooted in faith for me. And I'll talk about that. Um, and so I grew up here in BC. I'm in Surrey on the unceded territory of the uh, Tuasin, Musqueam, Swallowtooth, and Coast Salish First Peoples, uh, who have been here since time immemorial. And I grew up with this connection to the environment. I remember going out for walks here in Watershed Park. Uh, while it's nice and sunny days, but it's somewhat cloudy and it's that perfect level of mist. And it smells amazing outside. Uh, and those in BC will know that. I think we had a day like that yesterday here in the Lower Mainland. Uh, and I remember just ex experiencing this connection to nature. And so as I was in elementary school and high school, I began to learn about climate change and I started doing presentations to elementary school students about climate change. And so fast forward to when I'm 14 years old, I get this amazing opportunity to travel to Arctic Canada. I was in the Arctic for two weeks as a part of the Students on Ice expedition. And that was when things really changed for me. Uh, I went in thinking, uh, first of all, I went in telling people that I would be going on this expedition to solve climate change, <laughs> well, which in retrospect is uh, an amazing aspiration. And uh, I remember just being in this place where I saw climate change firsthand. I saw ice melting in front of my eyes. Uh, there was this one moment that I like to tell people. I was at the Elulisat Ice Fjord in Greenland, where all I see is ice stretched out for kilometers and kilometers as far as your eye can see. Uh, and all 200 people on this expedition with me, so these are scientists, historians, musicians, and other students like me, uh, we all went silent for a moment. And in that silence, we could hear icebergs melting. And so it's millions of drops of the purest water on the planet going into the freshest body of water that exists. And at 14 years old, I was inundated with feelings of hopelessness. Like if the scale of the climate crisis is this bad that I can't do anything about it. And what added on this was learning from my Inuit peers about the impacts of climate change and colonialism on their own communities. And I learned that not only had residential schools destroyed their way of life, but climate change has also completely changed their lives. Uh, not for the past five years though, but for the past 20 and 30 years where they have been seeing the impacts of climate change that we're now just beginning to see. And so I was, I was wondering what I could do and I recognized that strength and resilience in my peers, that their communities had combated or had been adapting to the impacts of climate change. And I came back home just feeling this frustration that in my own education, I had never learned about the impacts of climate change in my own country. I had never known that when some uh, elders in their communities go out hunting, they don't come back because uh, ice patterns have changed so much that traditional knowledge about seasons and ice uh, is no longer as valid. Like I, I had no idea that that was a problem. And so what I really wanted to do was create a form of connection. 
So students like me could learn about the impacts of climate change uh, in a way where we could foster empathy. And I started Break the Divide alongside my older brother, Sukhmeet, who was actually speaking at the next panel. Uh, and what we decided to do was such a simple idea. It was just to do a Zoom call uh, between my high school in Delta, BC, uh, with a school in Inuvik in the Northwest Territories. And it was a very simple idea. We were doing Zoom calls way before they were cool to do so. Uh, and in this video call, students learned about each other. They talked about their experiences with the environment. They talked about climate change and the impacts that it's had on their own communities. And what we realized there is that uh, climate change was no longer a big abstract issue that students felt like they could do nothing about. Rather, they were connected and they understood that they could make a change at their local community level. Uh, and when I talk about this, this feeling of not being able to make change, uh, as I mentioned in the beginning, I've been doing presentations to quite a few elementary school students now, and now I feel like I'm on the older side of youth activism. <laughs> and as I talk to younger students, I, I ask them how they feel about climate change specifically. And the most common response is that young people feel anxious, stressed, nervous, uh, and scared about what they want to do and what their futures will look like. And what I've realized is that to move from that space of apathy or uh, even in some cases denial about the issue of climate change, where we see that people's employment may be linked to an industry that climate action threatens. And so what we see there is that to move from this place of denial, apathy, or even extreme polarization about the issue of climate change, uh, what we need to do is to move from a space of apathy to empathy, and we can do that through conversation, through connection, and move that empathy to a space of action. So we move from apathy to empathy to action. Uh, I know it sounds really cool too. Uh, and, and we do that through connection, and we do, do that by connecting people. And at, at Break the Divide, uh, we started as a small project between two schools, and uh, with the support of amazing supporters like the Starfish Canada, uh, we've been able to expand globally. And what we've seen is that when students come together, when young people connect around the basis of climate change, uh, they feel less of that anxiety and hopelessness and they feel like they can create change. So uh, what I wanna leave everyone with is this idea that connection and hope are critical, especially during these times of uh, layering crises. What we see in terms of reconciliation and anti-racism initiatives need to be incorporated into the environmental movement so that we can connect people and have them understand on the basis of just, not just the environment, but how those things connect to real people. For me, that's always been the thing that grounds me. Uh, I remember in September of 2020 now, uh, as wildfires ravaged the Western coast of the United States, uh, smoke came up here in BC. And it was a Monday morning. It was the second week of September and I, was in town because I couldn't go back to university because of the pandemic. It was all online. And I, uh, I went outside of my home here in Surrey and I looked outside and all I could see was smoke. I couldn't go outside for a run. I couldn't go outside for a walk. And that brought back those feelings of hopelessness, that climate change is so bad that nothing can make a difference. But what grounded me in that process was empathy. It was learning that other people are also experiencing this and that uh, the empathetic approach of understanding that there is action being taken, that Indigenous peoples uh, have been taking actions uh, against the colonial institutions that have caused climate change for so long, and that we can create a difference if we do come together uh, and break these divides, uh, like Yusuf was talking about, breaking these silos that we're experiencing. And so I'll leave with a bit of uh, wisdom from my own faith that I've learned about. Uh, in Sikhism, as a practicing Sikh, I I believe in this concept of oneness, that we're all connected, the environment, the people, and that oneness is critical. And we've all talked about that oneness that we experience when we connect with nature, that we go outside. And uh, in order to be optimistic and be hopeful for the future, uh, we need to ground that optimism with action. In Sikhism, there's this concept known as jardikala, which means eternal optimism. In light of anything that's going on in the world, you have this internal fire that's lit that allows you to move forward. And so I truly believe that if we, if all of us on this call and everyone listening, if we talk about that eternal optimism, if we incorporate that hope and action into our own lives that we, that we can be better off, uh, we can break these divisions around climate, 
around racism, around um, the, the challenges that we face with reconciliation and that we can be better tomorrow. I think that's the way that we empower young people, the way that we combat the climate crisis. Uh, and I think it's just, it's so important that we come together to do that. Uh, so thank you so much for giving me this platform to be able to share this. Uh, I've really appreciated the wisdom of everyone else here too. So thank you so much.